Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. As always, we take you through the pages, uh, front pages to be precise, of a national dailies. We have G.D. Johnson, who is on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. G.D. Johnson, happy Friday, and thank you for joining us. Merci. Happy Friday to you. Good morning to you, and good morning to you. And good morning to you. Yeah, and Messi, have Messi on all the bus. <laughs> good morning, JJ. Most definitely. We start off with uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. For abandoning zoning principle, South East to dump PDP after 23 years of party loyalty. What does that mean? Uh, we move away from that. Underneath uh, several riders, South South leaders kick, says party has dug its grave. Article Wike, I am OB, Emmanuel intensifies consultation. There will be a bridge between the North and South, Sarakli declares. ISIS releases video on execution of 20 Nigerians in Borno, and Tambowal Sultan Koka appeal for calm and demand justice for a student that was killed in Sokoto that was beaten to death. you also find another header this morning. Odili retires from Supreme Court and backs restructuring, uh, talking about Mary Odili. Jonathan, not yet registered member, but also APC insists. It's been a back and forth with that particular story. Fuel scarcity, federal government falls Ipman's 500 billion naira bridging claims. Quit notice, a Mefili visits President Mohamed Buhari, urges Nigerians to expect news. What could he be? These are the headlines on the leadership this morning. We'll move on next to the Nation newspaper. Emefiel admits Buhari as SGF uh, clarifies quit order. CBN governor, I am having fun. Appointees to APC, INEC. Protesting students block highways. Uh, Asu adamant after talks. Tamuwa Sultan condemned lynching of female student. Retirement of justices uh, depletes Supreme Court. Expect flooding nationwide agency alerts Nigerians. El Rafai Kaduna delegates a pledge support for Tinubu. AFC backs African economy with $2 billion facility. INEC reconsidering a safekeeping of ballot papers in CBN's votes. All right, federal government launches mobile app to tackle insecurity. Counselor held with AK 47. Those are the main stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. We move away from the Nation and uh, let's quickly look at the punch and find out what's happening on the punch this morning. 2023 presidency, Jonathan submits APC farms today. Okay, so we're wondering <laughs> all of the reports we're getting. He's, he's a member, he's not a member, he's not registered. MFLE Sean's resignation calls. CBN governor entitled to stay in office 30 days to general elections, or Zakome is quoted on that. Adamant appointee Sue APC, Einek Yahaya Bello submits nomination form. Buhari's resignation order to save APC candidate from loss, that's what the president is quoted to say. Despite 129 billion naira intervention loans, agri imports hit 2.7 trillion naira. And INEC says, 1.4 million online registration invalid. Wow. Buhari signs anti-money laundering counter-terrorism bill. And inadequate database threatens SIM and NIN registration. Uh, you also find NIMC admits uh, deficit. Vice Chancellor Sphere delay admission process or student process. Uh, Protest spreads. You have student protesting. Lassa fever kills 149 in four months, says NCDC. 20 princes show interest application ends today, uh, talking about the Alafi. And thugs attack on door female aspirant supporters and several injured. Some of the headlines you find this morning on the punch household consumption. Rises to 108 trillion naira, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Nigeria's 15 million out of school children population frightening. That's what uh, the former president, Olushegun 
Basson draw a scooter to say. But these are the headlines on the punch, some of it. And finally, we look at the Nigerian Tribune. Outrage that alleged blasphemy, uh, outrage over killing of female student in Sokoto police arrest to Governor Mitz Khan. And uh, Ohanese Pandev knocked PDP for throwing presidential ticket open. 32 states, 233 LGAs risk flood disasters, federal government warns. INEC to adopt manual electronic transmission of result. Federal government licenses 12 new private universities. Pilot daughter of ex-minister, 10 others die in plane crash. 2023, SGF rights ambassadors, heads of parastatals, others with political ambition to vacate seats. Ngige hopeful of fruitful end to strike as ASU, SANU, NASU, NAAT, NLC meet federal government team. Keep a date with destiny on May 29, Bello campaign DJ. I'm having fun. Let Nigerians have heart attack. Oh, wow. And those are all of the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. Gide Johnson, it's good to have you join us this morning on the show. We appreciate your time, always. Let's start with the Central Bank of Governor's um, insurance call for resignation and his visit to the president. And then um, he's telling us that we should expect news and also giving us the wonderful news that um, he's having fun and then we can have an attack. It shows the irresponsibility and insensitivity of the person that is in charge of, of the monetary policy of our nation. And that's why Naira has had a free fall um, because it shows his entire attitude, his, 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 his lack of respect for, for, for statutory provisions of the constitution in due process. So, and his general attitude, you know a man through whatever, through the way they speak, through their words. You can't, you can't know my thought until I open my mouth to talk. Now we could know his thought, we could know his attitude, we could know the degree of his professionalism and the rest of it. We don't need any rocket science for you, for anybody to tell you that if you are seeking the high office of the presidency and you are occupying a sensitive position, you should resign. And then I think that the president himself has not helped matters. And that's been a, the approach of the president. He has developed a laid back approach in dealing with people decisively. I'm sorry for doing this comparison, but I did public administration while I was in university as one of the elective courses in the Department of Political Science in Utila. And I said in public administration, the only way you can make science out of public administration is to do a comparative analysis. Now, if you compare, I can't imagine the central bank governor under our passenger administration doing this type of nonsense that the MFLA is doing under Boris administration. It's, it's not only insulting, it's insensitive, and for him, and he's coming back to ask for a vote. He said he's having fun, and Nigeria can have pain. We wait for him at the polls. We wait for him. So let's do a way with 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 the immediately immediately uh, open dance in the market in the market in the marketplace. We wait for him. We we'll come and dance in the open marketplace. Now, um, let's look at the the, the story of um, of of what happened in Shokoto State in this age and time. I have told anyone that care to listen. Is it the way we practice the religion in a Christian religion or Islamic faith in Nigeria? Is it the same way they practice it in, in Israel and in Saudi Arabia and other Arabian countries? Is it the same way that we practice it? There's a clear distinction. Now, this, this is even not our own religion. These are imported foreign religion. These are religions that are imported from the South. In fact, it's a religion that came from Abraham, the Abrahamic religion. And that's why some of us have advocated that. If you want to swear people in into office, let us use our local deity. You live a mountain in Nigeria, you go to a mountain in Arabia, and you say that's where God is. That's the only way you can see God. And you live a mountain in Nigeria, in Okemesi and the rest of it, Babila Plateau, you go to mountain in Jerusalem, and you say that's where God, that's where God is. God is not limited by space, is not limited by, by location. Now, God, any God that you have to fight for, then it's not worth any kind of worship. Leave God alone for God to fight for himself. Don't fight for God. Leave God alone. He's the supreme being. And can you imagine 
setting a fellow human being ablaze because of because of so there are no there are no judicial process there are no process of resolving issues in the country it's unfortunate this itself nigerians are waiting on how the shokudo state government and how the federal government is going to respond to this issue and i can tell you without a fact that this itself has put a certain question mark on the aspiration of the governor of shokuto state with respect to what has happened in the state because the way this issue will be resolved will determine if he is picked as a pdp presidential candidate hypothetically then the way this matter is resolved will determine whether i will get votes from people of other religious divide or not that's um that's on being these people arrested should not only be uh, should not only be arrested they should be prosecuted and their trial should be made open and it is clear in nigeria if you commit murder it's clear it's death penalty and this one should be if if it is proven by a court of competent jurisdiction this one should be executed publicly so as to serve as a deterrent for us in the future even though i'm totally against the execution but this particular issue should call for outrage from everyone that cares that cares about the dignity of human 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 life you could arrest the person take the person before your sharia court and let the person be tried and don't take laws into your own hand. and you can imagine they are students students of a tertiary institution all right um... for today those are just the very sad um, scenarios, uh, th those two um, issues that you have looked into, uh, the, the 2023 elections, MBFL, and of course what happened in Sokoto State uh, just yesterday. But let's move away from that and uh, let's talk about other stories uh, trending. Um, let's look at the Nigerian Tribune, um, if we would. Uh, 32 states, 233 local government areas risk flood disasters, federal government wants. Jide, the issue for me is uh, the warning and all of that. Uh, over time, there are always uh, issues of uh, flood disasters. Don't you think the federal government should just be doing beyond uh, warning and uh, find a way to mitigate against this rather than just warning you know, residents? Um, um. Justin warns that he will not present the program tomorrow. Say that again. Uh, Messi won. I said Justin, Justin yeah. warns the producer that he will not present the program. Uh, Justin warns the producer that the program might not hear tomorrow. Okay. When government that should be responsible for taking care of things is warning the people, that's the restriction of duty. And year in year out, we hear the story where the rainy season is about commencing that are before. What measures? What's the why do we have national emergency? National emergency management agency. Nema. Why? Why are they budgeting resources for them? If you look into the budget, you look at monies that have been allocated for dealing with deforestation, dealing with flooding. And the rest of it, where does this money go to? So it's year in year the same story, year in year out, where government is is shifting responsibility or what government ought to do back to the people for the people for the people to do that. It is the same thing when we read that story. It's the same thing with vice councillors of 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 university saying that the strike is delaying the admission process. You relate that to jam over the course of this week early this week and late last week, they had jam. In the last three years, admission have not, there are still some schools that have not done the admission of their 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, and 2020, 2021 admission process. They have not done it. Yeah, jam is still continuing. Jam is a federal agency. Jam is still continuing with admission process. Now, the mandate for jam is joint admission and matriculation examination board, joint admission and matriculation examination board. Now, there are two mandates. One is the admission, two is their matriculation. Now, you can't do admission you can, until you conclude an admission. And the conclusion of an admission is matriculation. You don't do another. But we live in a useless society. I'm, 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 
I'm so sorry, apologies to whoever I've insulted, that you will find a body that is interested in making money out of Nigerian press. The admission of last year, they have not concluded. They are doing another admission this year again, running against their own mandate. But because they have been involved in a lot of critical stakeholders, nobody is talking about it. How would you do admission that you have not done matriculation? You have not completed the matriculation, for one. You are doing the admission for another. And then you are collecting money from people. It's a crime. Both the jam, the jam, jam itself, Ministry of Education, they are committing crime against humanity. They are ripping off Nigerians and are destroying the lives of Nigerian children. Giving them hope in a hopeless situation. Because the schools are on strike already. The admission of last year has not been concluded. The one for two years ago has not been concluded. You are doing another exam again. All you need to do is to visit the centers and see parents sitting down on the floors because they want their children to go to school. And the schools are nowhere to be found. In actual... Jide Johnson, do we still have you... Do we still have you um, online with us? It feels like we've lost connection okay. with Jide Johnson. You know, as we as talked about this to, issue. Uh, we establish talked... our connection. Okay. We'll definitely. Mercy, we back. talked about it. Ajade, you said that I was <laughs> laughing about it. When we talked about people still, you know, scrambling or grappling to write jam when some schools have not even done admission, when us was on strike. And, and Jide is mentioning it again because it is really a serious affair. Although I apologize for making light of it the other day, but these issues are real. These issues are very serious. They're collecting money, and students, they don't even know their, their future as it is you know, with um, the admission. And um, Jam has been at home for some months, and uh, some schools, they've not been able to wrap up se uh, previous sessions, and the uh, people are still writing UTME. So... Of course, Maybe he, should he, halt he, it for now. He, he he's actually, I mean, he's raised very, very uh, valid so, yes. uh, points right there. If uh, those who were supposed to have a session matriculating and all of all of that has not happened, what's mm. the essence? So you're going to just going to have a backlog a because if this uh, set of persons do not matriculate, what's the guarantee? But you can't really, really almost blame the student for not the, the fact that blame. you know they're. They have they to aspire to, to go to school form. now. That's because in the first instance, if Jam did not put out the uh, public publication there, if they did not put out the okay. advertisement to say uh, we're admitting, then it will not. It's like saying you didn't even know that you know these contractors they will not pay you for the job. <laughs> then you saw a contract being right. published, you, you applied to be part of it. But we have G.D. Johnson back on the line. Yes, it's good to have you join us once again. Let's allow you finish your thought of line. So I think the students don't know where to take their protest to. They are taking their protest to the highway. Why should they take their protest to the highway? They should take it to state house of assembly. They should take it to the national assembly. They should take it to government buildings. Government buildings, and then and then and then they take it to Asurok, and then they take it to the airports, the executive wing of the airports. That's where they should take their protest to. Because these are the policy makers. The protesting on the highway is simply pain on an average Nigerian that needs to nothing about what is up, what is affecting them. I recall when we were in Unila. One of the things that forced the Bangladesh administration out of Lagos, when they opened up Milan Bridge, when we went on protest and we blocked up Milan Bridge, we did not seize the vehicles of private citizens. We seized vehicles of federal government and state government. And that's when they listened to us. I don't know the kind of student student unionism that that that, that right from that. You can't inflict your pains on an average Nigerian. Don't protest on the highway. Take your protest to to the National Assembly. Take it to the State National Assembly. Take it to government houses. These are the policy makers. Take it to the office of the minister. These are the policy makers, not Nigerians that are going about their normal businesses on the on the on the highway. And there should be a public hearing. By the National Assembly on this issue of gold admission and manipulation, this continuous ripping off of Nigeria, collecting money from parents to do jam that you know there is no admission inside and there is no matriculation inside. I will end on that. All right, GJ Johnson has closed so this conversation down. Now let's look at the leadership newspaper. It talks about the Southeast to dump PDP after 23 years of party loyalty. What does this really mean? The Southeast has gradually turned the PDP to a large extent, the, the Southeast. But know that if you are looking for a region that is only PDP, it's the South, South, and the South. 
south south first and then the south east the south east to a large extent because in anambra state abga has been in power for 20 for 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 19 years now and so for 17 years now almost 17 years because it last uh, the last three three gov the last two governors with the current governor plus the current governor are in abga then um Imo has been on the IPC for the past um, six, seven, 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 seven years. So the largest extent, the, and then the governor of Ebony State has crossed over to to APC. So you can't say that truly Southeast is only PDP. But over time, in terms of voting, in terms of actual voting, um, the Southeast has has always been locked down by by PDP. However. Some gladiators in the Southeast started romancing APC almost seven years ago. Ken Namani, who was the Senate president. Paras Aim Aim, who was the Senate president. David Dumai, who is elect, who's an elected governor. Um, Oji Uzokal, who was a two-time governor. And you have them, these actors and players that have been critical players in PDP that have moved to APC. But anyone that is deceiving himself that APC is APC, is just deceiving himself. APC is PDP 2.0. So I'm, I will not be surprised if anybody in APC, if anybody in PDP moves to APC. Because if you look at the entire structure of the APC, the entire structure of the party machinery of APC is controlled by the PDP. Their national secretary, their national chairman was once the secretary of the board of trustee of PDP and was a two-term governor of PDP, but the two-term senate, senate, senator under the PDP platform. Their, their national secretary, Iola Mishuri, was a senator elected under PDP. So there's there's no PDP. We have said there's no PDP or APC in Nigeria. What the Nigerian political class cares about is about their interest. That's why you will see that Jonathan, good luck with Jonathan, that was humiliated, that was disgraced, that was humiliated by the APC. Will today be thinking of collecting the APC form, and APC will be thinking of fielding someone they derided, someone they humiliated, someone they disgraced, someone they gave all manners of name, that they will be willing to accept, quote unquote, the most corrupt, according to them, uh, pres and uh, to accept him into the into their poll as a, as a presidential as a presidential candidate. The bottom line is that they don't care about us. All they care about is themselves. All you need to do is to go to Abuja and you see them in the night. They relate together. So there's no PDP, there's no APC. We've been telling Nigerians about this for a very, 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 very long time. Mm. But I, I like, we like to understand further what this means mm. as, uh, you know, the headline puts that the South is dumb PDP after 23 years of party loyalty. Does this mean that, you know, afterwards you're not going to have Nigerians who are in the South is voting for the PDP? I mean, is this at the party level? Does this mean that, you know, they're just going yeah. to look at the minds of Nigerians not to support the PDP? The outcome, the outcome, the outcome, the outcome of the, the outcome of the presidential primaries in all the parties will determine where the voting bloc will go. However, PDP was economic with the truth. And it's unfortunate that Yosha is made the chairman and is the chairman that has manipulated the process. By the time tested principle of PDP, once the national chairman is from the north, the presidential candidate comes from the south. And that's what the arrangement, that's why when it was PDP convention, there was no pres there was no national chairman office that that had, there was nobody from the south that contested the national chairmanship office. In actual sense, the office was zoned to the north before it was my my co zoned to the to the to the north central. And that's why your child was picked. Your child was picked to, 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 to do that. Now moving forward, whatever happens in twenty 23, we determine the, the, the way forward for Nigeria. Whether Nigeria will remain as a corporate entity or not, whether there will be need or agitation for self-determination. Because if you have principles that govern your nation, your relationship about the North and South dichotomy, and now you try to bridge that gap by having a seamless arrangement, an unwritten rule that governs our power shifts between these two major, two major, two major, um, geographical divisions that we have in Nigeria. Forget about the North, it's not West, not South. It's just the North and the South. And then, if you don't have that arrangement, then you'll see. For example, 
in APC, the same thing was done. And then what did the APC do? They threw the ticket open. Same thing with the PDP. Now, can move forward. Will Southern politicians ever trust the Northern politicians? Now, what is at stake concerning 2023 moving forward is trust. Is the issue of trust. And that trust will be tested, will be tested to the wire. And until the presidential candidates of the parties are beat, we will not know where the, the the where the voting blocks will go, whether the South East voting block will go with the PDP or they will go with the APC. Because even if you look at the arrangement, the arrangement in APC is not even favoring the South East. Who is the presidential candidate that has come out of the South East that want to aspire? Some of them that want to aspire, they've jettisoned their, their aspiration. And some from the South East have also bought the form for, for Senator, for example, like the governor of Cross River State, he bought the form of a presidential ticket and he also bought the form of senatorial 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 form so these are these are some of the issues that um, we resolved moving moving forward but under normal circumstances the south is deserve the first shot on the presidency and the south south is the southwest does not even the southwest the northwest does not deserve to have anything in the presidency Gina Johnson, the vice so president or the president it is it should be the southeast south south not central and not east those are the people that should have conversation with the presidency when i talk about the presidency i'm talking about the vice president and the president these are the conversation moving forward we want to have principle of inclusion of every element that constitutes the nigerian nation a little on you know mm -hmm. the actions or the action of the governor of uh, cross river state don't you think that this might just go with the saying that, you know, don't put your eggs in one basket? Uh, well, I mean, we knew, that's, we knew that's how Kuruta, <laughs> it's nothing, you know, Kuruta so Kuruta did the same thing in 2014, where he picked the presidential ticket form to contest against Buhari in Lagos, and then after, same thing with Tampua, Tampua did the same thing in, 20, in 2014, so it's nothing new. It's just that Nigerians don't, in my, in my memory, we are sure that in my memory, Nigerians don't, Follow history. It's nothing new. I did a I did a short story, um, short story about about the meeting that took place last week Friday. You know, we were talking about the meeting of APC taking place last week. Did you the last? And I said, I'm not advising Oshiba Day to come. And Oshiba Day actually came. They all came for the meeting. And after the meeting, I did a short story where I wrote about the tale of two bolas. What happened? The story, the scenario that played out in 1990. Right. Two bolas like in the and I. Yet me or so All right, people uh, are just uh, it's, 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 it's just it's just 2014 year. Okay, we have Tampua. to let you go now. Hello. We have to let it's you all. go. Jude, we have to let you go, Jude Johnson. Uh, we are completely out of time, but uh, oh. indeed, uh, thank you so much for all the useful insight and thoughts you usually share on the you know newspaper review. We do appreciate the time. It's a pleasure to be with you, Justin, and have a wonderful Friday and mercy. Once again, have mercy on us. All right, thank you so much. All right, uh, that's as much as we can take in this segment. Uh, we'll take a quick break. First of all, we'll look at uh, what happened this day in history. We'll come back and have our first major conversation of the day. Do join us again.